Good morning, everyone. If you are watching this uh, online service at home, you also need to know that there are a group of us meeting here Sunday morning at the church watching this service with you. And we just started that this Sunday, and we wanted to let you know that if you would like to be part of that and you'd like to join us on a... Anyways, if you would like to join us on Sunday mornings here at the church to watch these services together, we are having uh, a service. Maybe we will do two services if there's demand for it. 50 people and less is the restrictions that we're working with. But we need you to let us know about that. We need you to call Sheila or email Sheila at the church office. And please do that as soon as possible so that we can know whether we need to do one service or two services on the Sunday morning. Also, we wanted to let you know that this Wednesday is Canada Day, of course, and the church office will be closed. So that means that our regular Digging Deeper Bible study will be on Thursday at 2.30 here at the church instead of Wednesday. By the way, if you'd like to join us for that, uh, it's about an hour together where we dig into the previous Sunday's sermon and just learn and grow and pray together. Anyone is welcome to come to that. There are some steady questions that I send out to you beforehand just to help prep for our discussion. And so let us know if you'd like to be part of that and we can send you those steady questions. Now, on behalf of the leadership of all of our Alliance Church, I wanted to thank you as a congregation for your continued generosity and support of our ministries here. If you do not know how you can uh, bring your tithes and offerings in, you can mail it to the church. Uh, you can also drop it off here at the church. The hours that you can do that will be on the screen uh, beside me. And the third way, of course, is that you can go to our church website, alloverreliancechurch.com, and you can give online. Lots and lots of you have started to do that. It works very well. So we wanted to let you know about that. On our YouTube channel, uh, we've put together a short uh, little tutorial of how you can use online giving. It's very easy. So thank you as a congregation for your continued faithfulness. It enables us to continue to do what we are doing around here and to continue to minister uh, to our community. So thank you for that. Wanted to let you know that our Board of Elders and staff are currently uh, planning a new budget for our upcoming new fiscal year. Our fiscal year will begin, new fiscal year will begin August 1st. And so we would just appreciate your prayers as we plan for this. When we plan a budget, we're not just planning numbers, but we're planning the different ministries that are associated with those numbers. And so just pray that God would give us wisdom and uh, discernment as we think about where he is going to be leading us over the next coming year. We would appreciate your prayers.
At this time, my favorite verse may be found in Psalm 86, verse 11, where we read, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. The phrase, teach me your way, O Lord, has been in my head and in my thinking for quite a few months now. And in these past months, during this pandemic time, uh, this has been a time for me of a lot of reading and learning, and a lot of that reading has been in the scriptures. And the scriptures are an unparalleled source of learning and teaching. Also, many decades ago, when I was young in my career, I made a commitment to myself and my colleagues to be a lifelong learner. And this verse reminds me of that commitment. And finally, the phrase, Teach me thy way, O Lord, or teach me your way, O Lord, is the title of a hymn or a song that I learned when I was much, much younger. And I still love that hymn, and I love to sing that hymn. And it may be found on page 395 of our worship hymnal. One of the verses that I feel like is um, something that's come, that I've had to come to many times in my life, and it's really kind of got me through a lot of difficult points, um, is uh, from Isaiah 40, verse 27. It says, um, O Israel, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? How can you say God refuses to hear your case? Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows faint or weary. Not one, me not one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Even youths will become exhausted and the young men will give up. But those who wait in the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on the wings of the eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Um, yeah, when I've gone through some pretty tough circumstances, I just, God just keeps putting that into me. You know, God sees those. He feels with us. He He weeps with us when we weep. And, and it's just getting that courage and that strength. Um, and uh, just having that longing for who God is and knowing that he holds us and he's the lifter of our heads. So yeah, just, we just, that is one of my verses. Hi. Hello all of our Alliance, this is Jeremy Kinneberg from Vernon. And I am so pleased to be able to be with you today for your weekend services. Now, whether you're gathering in the sanctuary again for the first time in a while at home with some friends or a small group or even your family together, I just want to encourage you that Jesus wants to meet with you today. And I look forward at some point in time to hopefully coming back and gathering with you when the church is able to meet again. But in the meantime, bless you, grace and peace to you, and have a great weekend. As I begin, would you permit me to pray as we open the word today? Father, uh, I would ask that in these next moments that you would make our hearts come alive by the power of the Holy Spirit to the truth of who Jesus really is that we would see him for who he said he is, that we would get to know him in a new, fresh way, and that our encounter with him today through the word would make us a bit more like him, but also more open to walk as he walked, uh, to take on the culture of the king and the kingdom, and to live well in these days. And we praise you, God, and we thank you for what you're doing in the church and in the world around us. And we invite you to speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perhaps many of you may know my story and my journey of faith with Jesus, but some of you may not. Um, I grew up in a denomination and church that believed in healing and understood that Jesus has made healing possible in his atoning work on the cross. Our denomination's statement of faith says this clearly. Provision is made in the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ for the healing of the mortal body. Prayer for the sick and anointing with oil as taught in the scriptures are privileges for the church in this present age. This is from the Christian and Missionary Alliance Statement of Faith. In James 5, we're given a path to walk when we're in trouble, when we're sick, or even when we're just having a really great day. The path is to walk a life of prayer. We're encouraged in all circumstances to pray, to speak to God, to reach out to Him, but also to listen and to wait on Him. Regarding sickness or being troubled or unwell, James says that we're to pray and to call others around us to pray with and for us in our time of need. Uh, these are to be faithful, mature believers who can walk in the fellowship with God and, and call out for God for healing. When we pray, 
We believe that God hears our prayers and that those prayers are actually powerful and effective, that they matter, that our prayers are meaningful. So when we pray, we believe that God can actually heal. It says this, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James 5, 13 to 16. Now, growing up, we didn't talk about healing and miracles, though we believed in it. Uh, from what I saw and what was going on around us, uh, we would pray for someone when they were sick, but often it was with a lackluster, non-committed prayer that would often give God all the outs he could possibly need in order to not heal. Uh, we would give God the space to encourage, to comfort, to care for, to love on, to bless, to be with the loved ones in their time of need. But so rarely was there a prayer or even a teaching on the God who heals or the God who is able to be our healer because he said he is. There was a lot of if it's your will prayers, but not a lot of God, we believe that you can do this. We prayed with a giant maybe in our hearts with little conviction that God could actually heal. The problem with giants is that they may be and often are the thing that stands in the way of your healing and your encounter with God. Do we believe that Jesus is able to heal today? I would say we do. It seemed, though, in my journey as a younger person, as if healing, though it was indeed purchased at the cross of Christ, and it was a reality for us today, was not necessarily for today. Isaiah 53, 4-5 says this, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. It was a purchased reality of the cross. But that purchase seemed only to apply to the early church and very few exceptional other individuals throughout history. At least that's how it looked. We'd have missionaries that would come in when I was a kid, and they would tell these amazing stories of how God had showed up in a desperate moment, how he had healed somebody's body, and they would share that Jesus is still the healer. Uh, this was stirring up my own faith and wanting more of that. Jesus was still healing. It just seemed he wasn't in my part of the world. The more I watched people get prayer and the more I saw people not healed consistently, the more I became uncomfortable with the way things were. As this happened, this discomfort seemed to line up increasingly with my discomfort, the lack of depth and intimacy, relationship and power in the church. Uh, just an involvement and discussion around the Holy Spirit were missing as well. And I wanted more with God. I wanted the deeper life of Christ. I grew up in an amazing church with amazing pastors and amazing people. I just wanted more. And as I saw in the word, those who asked for more and sought after what God had for them often found more from him. Those who hungered and thirsted for righteousness found it. I wanted more. Now, God honored my heart's cry, but maybe not in the way that I wanted him to. Uh, it wasn't what I asked for, for sure, but it's what he wanted me to experience so that I can understand what he had for me. God honored my heart's cry. He was opening my eyes and wanting to open my eyes to his power, to his love, and to the healing that he was able to do in and through me if I was willing to step in. But again, it wasn't the way that I thought it would be. It was winter 2002, and I was living in Regina, Canadian Bible College. Uh, we were in the last semester of our schooling there, and uh, we had stepped into an opportunity, myself and a few friends, to uh, go from Regina to Indonesia as a part of a missions trip. Now, we'd survived Y2K, 9-11, and of course, as living in Regina, it was winter, so it was minus 42 degrees Celsius when we left Regina heading for Indonesia. We landed in plus 40 Celsius in muggy hot Surabaya. We partnered with some incredible international workers who were living the gospel out in a place where there was it was closed to the gospel and many of the people were closed in general to the work of Jesus and even who he was. We couldn't even talk about Jesus there. One night, we'd been playing with the kids all day and I got sick, really sick. Uh, we'd been playing soccer with the kids in the refugee village that we were in. Uh, it was just not a great uh, place as far as health level would go. Uh, there was sewage in the ditches, unsanitary conditions all around us. And uh, that evening I began to present what the missionaries referred to as a form of dysentery. 
We were on an island far from a hospital, far from medical care or attention, and I was in extreme discomfort, uh, extreme pain, and it was horrible, honestly. Uh, the whole night it was just a really tough night, and a night that I won't ever forget. The next morning, I went to the missionaries, and I, I just said, we need to do something here. This is getting really bad. Uh, they gave me two options. The first was they said, we can get onto uh, the vehicle, we could drive up to the to the ferry, we could take the ferry across the um, the water to the mainland. When we get to the mainland, we're going to have to drive through the city of 11 million people, get to the far end of the city where the international hospital is, and then you'll have to wait. Um, that's the first option. I said, what's the second option? <laughs> they said, the second option is this, is that we can pray. And I said, okay, let's do it. They laid their hands on me and they prayed for me. They asked for Jesus to meet me in my time of need. And they asked if he would heal me. Within the hour, friends, I'll say this. Within the hour, the sickness had left my body. The pain was gone. Energy returned to me. And I went back to work in the project that we had gone there originally to do that day. God had healed my body. He was wanting to show me his love. And he moved in power on my behalf. But not in the way that perhaps I'd asked him to. So when it came to healing, I sought God for this. I found that God was beginning to open my eyes to what he wanted to do, what he was able to do, and what he was longing to do, I would say, even in the church, but was not maybe given the opportunity to work in and through the church and through his people. So God called me to risk, to step out and be willing to pray, and not with an if in my heart, but believing when and how that God wanted to do it, that he could do it. He wanted me to pray, Father, could you heal this person? Because I know that you can. I prayed for many that were not healed. I prayed for some that had nice moments with God. Some that were just pleased that somebody had prayed for them. But then some were healed. I was seeing God heal. I saw him do it in my life. And now I was seeing it in other people's lives. One thing that I found is that we were seeing more people getting healed when we prayed for them than when we didn't. Now, it sounds funny to say that, but the reality is this, is we often don't give God the opportunities to work through us because we're not sure if he will. Um, I often say it this way, is we fail 100% of the tests that we don't take. Uh, this is one that God was asking me to take, was to step in and be willing to ask him to heal somebody. Our lack of prayer may be the only thing at times that gets in the way of God operating in divine healing in and through us. Our lack of prayer maybe holding back the flood of the healing water of heaven, coming and touching people and giving them an encounter with God. So we prayed. I started to see more of it when I began to walk in a place of faith and taking God at his word. When you take God at his word, if he says that it's for you and he calls you to it, when you try to do it obediently, he's just asking you to step out in faith. And when you try to do it obediently, sometimes you'll see him stepping in your behalf. I believe that God is able to heal, and he began to call me to take him at his word, just like the Father in John 4, 46-53. There's a man who comes to Jesus, and he's desperate because his child is sick and dying. He comes with this place of desperation in his heart to say, I can't do anything else, but I've heard you might be able to. He comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, would you heal my son? And it says this, that Jesus said, go and your child will live. Now he to ask Jesus to come with him to make his son well. But Jesus says to him, go, your child will live. Take a step of faith. And in verse 51, or verse 50, it says this. The next words, and I love these words, it says, The man took Jesus at his word and he left. While he was still on his way, it says, The servants came to him and said, Your son is now well. It says that as a result of this, that he and his whole household believed, especially when they found out that the moment his son started to get well was the moment that Jesus said, go, your son will be well. As myself, my wife, and some of our friends have been taking God at his word, we began to see Jesus is still wanting to heal people, and he is fully able to heal people. Christ is our present healer. I saw that God is 100% invested in our healing. Uh, he's wanting to heal people. He's wanting to encourage people, but he's also wanting to heal the body. The question often comes, though, are we willing to be interested and step in on people's behalf? Are we willing to invest ourselves and take a step of faith and courageously pray and give God the chance to heal through us? We believe that healing is for today and that it is made possible through Jesus' death and resurrection. That's important. But for many, pe for many people today, this idea still seems foreign and rooted back in the Bible. 
A.B. Simpson said this, the, the founder of our denomination, he said this in his book, Lord of the Body. He said, I see no place in the Bible where we are taught that the miraculous is to cease with the ascension of the Lord. I'm becoming increasingly convicted that God's desire is to heal his people. The Bible is very clear that not only is it his desire, but it is also something he's able to make a reality to make it happen through his people. The first thing to be aware of is that God is real and that he has a real concern for you where you're at today. Regardless of your story or what's going on in your body or in your mind or in your heart, he has something that he wants to do and he wants to meet you in that today. He is our healer. Even back in the desert in the time of the Exodus, God was very clear that this is something that he wanted to do. He wanted to heal his people. One of the first ways that he spoke to the people and referred to himself was this. In Exodus 15, 26, he said, I am the Lord who heals you. You see, God is the same. He's unchanging. He is still the Lord who heals you. Uh, we may need to change our minds and our way of thinking about this, but the reality is he has not changed. T.L. Osborne, in his book, Healing the Sick, says this, People have changed God's I am to I was. Friends, we need to believe that God is the I am and I can, not the I was and I don't. At times we put limits on a limitless God and actually get in the way of him being able to do the things that he wants to do in and through us. It's wild to me that we as people can actually do that. Now one thing that's critical is this, is that we need to operate in faith in order to see a spiritual thing happen in our physical bodies. Dr. Bernie Vandewell in his book, The Heart of the Gospel, says this, It does not merely hope that God can heal or believe that God has the power to heal should it be his will. It is rather convinced that it is always God's will to heal. It not only thinks such things, but acts on them. A.B. Simpson in his book, The Fourfold Gospel, said, Divine healing comes to us by faith. It's not the faith that heals, but faith enables us to receive it. We need to make the choice to believe that he is able to heal by faith. Faith doesn't heal. Doesn't heal. Faith holds keys. It unlocks and opens the door to the healer coming into our lives. We see this over and over again in the gospel. Somebody had to take a step of faith. The friends believed for their paralytic friend and brought him to Jesus. The dad went to Jesus on behalf of his child and took him at his word. A paralyzed man later on in the preach here, you'll see, took a step of faith and leapt to his feet. The faith has to be put in the right place. Our faith is in Jesus Christ as our healer. Faith doesn't heal us, but it postures and positions our hearts and in effect our bodies in such a way that God is able to move on our behalf and work in our bodies. Now this is important, and I want to make sure that we understand this, that God is most primarily interested in our heart, the issues of the soul. He's most interested in our salvation first. He's more interested in our holiness than our happiness. He's wanting us to actually have an encounter with him in the heart level first. So when people would come to Jesus to have an encounter with him to be healed, he would often deal with their heart before he would deal with anything to do with their body. We must understand this is a priority for him to do this. These moments with God of healing are always about a divine encounter with the God of the universe who wants you to know him and to know that he actually knows you. Imperfections, brokenness, wounding, shame, uh, the hurts, the physical pains, everything. He knows everything about you. And he wants you in that place to know his love and experience his presence. Right there in the midst of all of it, that's where Jesus wants to meet us. He always went after people's hearts before he went after their bodies. He dealt with the heart and then he dealt with the body. We need to hear this today though, that Jesus is still healing. He's healing hearts. He's healing bodies. He's healing minds. He's restoring what is broken and he is our healer. Jesus is our healer for today, not just for the past, not just in the word, and not just for the disciples, but for you, and not just for you, but for others, for all of us around here. He is our present healer for today. When Jesus came all those years ago, he was sent by his Father God with a purpose, with a destiny, with a calling, to seek and to save the lost, to save the world, not to condemn the world and their sins, to bring healing, to bring hope, to bring renewal, to bring life to those dying in sins separated from God. 
Hundreds of years before his birth, the prophet Isaiah even spoke about what this would be like. And Jesus, when he publicly started his ministry, quoted the same word. And he said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus' calling was to restore right relationship with God and man and to begin to lay the groundwork for the foundation of the kingdom of God to come. He was bringing heaven to earth and making God's kingdom a possible reality in our lives. Again, T.L. Osborne in his book, Healing the Sick, said that Jesus was the physical expression of the Father's will. His life was both a revelation and a manifestation of the unchanging love and will of God. He acted out the will of God for us. He came to preach the good news to those who needed hope. He came to bring freedom to those who were captive, those in physical captivity and those in spiritual captivity. He came to heal and make physical healing possible. He came to proclaim life to those who were dead in their transgressions and to offer himself in their place so that they could live. Isaiah 53, 4-5 says, Surely he took upon himself our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought him, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Again, Jesus, through his life and death and resurrection, made possible our healing. We see this play out in Matthew 23, uh, Matthew 4, 23 and 24. It says that Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News spread all over Syria and people were brought to him who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed and those having seizures and the paralyzed and he healed them. Another translation says it this way, everyone who was brought to Jesus was healed. Jesus came to save us and part of that saving is the healing. Jesus' name means the Lord who saves, to save, the anointed one, the saving one, savior, rescuer, or deliverer. When Jesus' father is told about the baby that he is going to be the father of, that is actually the, the, the child of God within his soon-to-be wife, Mary, he's told this, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And this is what we know Jesus does is that he saves people from their sins. He's done this fully. Our eternity in Christ is secured and is assured and set. Part of this saving plays out in Jesus' ministry of healing as well. It says that everywhere he went, into villages, towns, and countrysides, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all, I love that word every time, all who touched him were healed. The word for healing that's used here is found about 110 times in the New Testament. And the word is sozo. It's a Greek verb that's an action word meaning to be saved or rescued out from underneath power or oppression. To be restored into wholeness uh, and to well-being. Essentially to be saved completely. It refers then to being saved from eternal punishment for sins. To being healed of disease. To being delivered from demonic oppression and torment. And in some cases it's speaking about all these at once. In Acts 3, 1 to 10, we read that. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At 3 in the afternoon, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet, began to walk, and then he went with him into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at all that had happened. I love that this man has an all-encompassing encounter with God that heals him on all these different levels. We see him physically healed because he's able to get up and walk. His ankles are strengthened. He's able to walk, demonstrating that he's healed physically. 
Then we see that he's emotionally healed. Um, when he has this encounter, it says that he leaps. He, he leaps down the street as they go towards the temple. Uh, his heart is just filled with joy. I know when a kid leaps, they've got joy inside of them. Try it sometime. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, and then the last thing is that he is spiritually healed. And the way that we see this is that he returns praise to God. He gives glory to God and he sings his praises as he heads towards the temple with them. You see, God is interested in our entire being. He made us body, soul, mind, spirit. He created us as an entire human. And he wants to encounter us in that entire place. Regardless of what your story is, regardless of what's happening in your body today, whether it's a mental, a physical, emotional, a spiritual issue, whatever it may be, reach out to Jesus today because he wants to actually meet you in your time of need exactly where you're at. He wants to come to you where you're at, not hoping you'll come to him first and try to get all your issues figured out. That's not how he works. He just says, come as you are, reach out to me today. Extend your hand towards me and receive the healing touch that I have for you. Invite me into your heart as your healer. Today, he is still healing. If you need an encounter with him in some area, some way, shape, or form, reach out to him. Regardless of where you're at, would you reach out to him today? And would you come just as you are? As we conclude the service today, whether you're watching in the sanctuary, you're watching online with a small group of friends or family or a home group, I want to encourage you to this. If there's something going on in your body, your soul, or your mind that you need some touch from Jesus today, reach out to him. Take that risky step and take him at his word. Jesus is your healer and he wants to heal and touch you today. He wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal his heart to you, but he also wants to meet you in your time of need. So take that step of faith and take him at his word. Then the second thing I'm going to ask you to do is take a courageous step. And that's ask someone else, wherever you're watching, to pray with you. Invite them to pray for you to experience a healing touch from Jesus, your healer. Jesus wants to heal you. He wants to meet you in your time of need. And so friends, regardless of what's going on in your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, whatever's happening today, invite Jesus to come and meet you there today. Thanks for allowing me to be a part of your service this weekend and for having the opportunity to speak into what's going on there, friends. It is so good to be with you, and I look forward to being with you in person again someday. As I close, per please permit me to pray. So, Father, even now, for those that are in this room who are needing a touch from you, whether they're in uh, a home, whether in a home group, or whether they're just in the sanctuary today, I would ask that today, if there's someone there that needs a healing touch from you, that you would meet them in their time of need that they would know your presence with them, and that they would experience Jesus Christ as their healer today. We love you, God, and we praise you, and we thank you for what you're doing in all of our Alliance Church. And we ask you to be glorified in everything that happens here today, and that the stories of healing would come, and that there would be testimonies that would give glory to you. We pray all these things through Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you, friends.
have a wonderful week. And uh, if throughout the week you would like someone to talk to or someone to pray with, just give us a call here at the church and we would love to sit down with you. You can come to the church and we would love to meet with you, listen to you and pray for you. It would be our privilege to do so. Pastor Jason or myself or Sheila, uh, we are here throughout the week. So just give us a call. Now, I wanna bless you from God's word as we go. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forever, forevermore. Amen. Bless you.